That's Damn fine. It. No, that was kind of on purpose. Because it's funny, because it's recording. <laughs> I'm not good at stacking things. I'm actually not great at building these things. But Steve is, so he's going to assemble all these parts into this because it's time to build a Unify video server with a bunch of hard drives to match the bunch of cameras that's, that are gonna be attached to this. So without further ado, we're gonna get started on assembling all this stuff into a computer and then we'll talk about the build process afterwards. Our Unify NVR is assembled. We've actually been testing with it for a couple days because you know, I like to run them for a little while and have them record on some cameras, make sure there's no hiccups or issues. We even go through the trouble of randomly unplugging it and plugging it back in to make sure it restarts and recovers uh, because just because it's going to be installed in the server room and it will have a, a UPS on it doesn't mean something might happen. So that's just an important test uh, and it's way better to do it here at our office before it gets installed into a client room. It has survived the abuse and I'm overly happy with it. Like this has been a really nice build. It's not the first one we've done. It's just the first one we've done on video. So a couple of things. We went with these eight terabyte Death Star NAS drives. And I kind of like the funny marketing, 7,200 RPM. It is up to 20% faster than other 5,400 RPM drives. Uh, funny on the marketing, but the reality of uh, these Death Star NAS, I've chose them. They have been on the Backblaze list of reliable hard drives. If you follow any of the videos, I've talked about that. Um, and my experience in the field with them has been equally good. I've found great reliability out of those drives. So we also went with the AMD Ryzen. Now we went with just the Ryzen 3 here. And this is the Ryzen 3 2200G Vega uh, with the Vega graphics and the MSI X370 board. Now, the Unify NVR, because the cameras themselves break things down into H.264, means there's not a lot of processor power needed for uh, getting the camera and the video and the rendering and things like that. Some of the other tools we've used previously, different NVR software, it heavily relies on the processor. So with the NVR builds when we're doing Unify, much less so. So it's not as big of a deal that you don't have like a really fast processor. Now, someone's undoubtedly going to comment, why didn't you go enterprise? Well, that really wasn't in their budget because we have six, eight terabyte uh, of these NAS drives. And we've built this uh, similar system before. They're very reliable out in the field. We haven't had any issues with them. And the nice thing is when you use standardized hardware, if anything goes wrong, I can just swap it. I know I could have spent about four times as much and bought like a enterprise product with a next day business on site and things like that. If the budget would have allowed that, great. It doesn't. There's a pretty substantial price difference between what we built here, which if you add up the parts is pretty reasonable compared to uh, some of the servers we built. And, you know, I've said this before and I'll leave it here. It comes down to the client if they got the budget for it. And these have proved very reliable. Now, how we set these drives up is in a RAID 6 and we use these uh, Kingwin drive bays. We've used them a few times before and they just work great. So this is a uh, Rosewill, Roswell case. The, um, I'll leave links to everything that we use to build this so you can get exactly the same parts if you're interested in uh, copying this build. And they're pretty basic rack mount server cases. They certainly get the job done. We've used a few of these before. I like the way they have the stabilizer bar because they're not as heavy duty as some of the other cases. So they're a little bit thinner, but with this bar right here, uh, that keeps it from torquing around and it actually is uh, quite solid and doesn't move around a lot. Now it came with this in it and it's got their own little trays for holding drives, which is cool. Um, we just wanted something and it's you know, it is easier once this becomes rack mounted because it doesn't have any rails or anything. Um, if there's ever a drive failure to be able just to pop a drive out and the overall expense of the build that doesn't add too much to have the drives easily accessible for us to uh, just pop them out. And I'll turn around real quick and show you. These are the drive bays. We didn't put the labels on them, but we will put uh, labels on each one so we know which drive it is. That way if a drive ever goes bad, we can just pop it out to rebuild the RAID array. And it's a tool list design, so no little screws and stuff to mess with. It's just easy to get things in and out. And it keeps the wiring and everything really clean on the inside, so if I ever have to, you know, get a drive out of here, no big deal. Slide it out, put it in. On the off chance they go bad and I can, I don't have the key in it right now, but I can unlock the front of the case to keep people from touching the front of it. 
but there's six onboard SATAs, uh, so there's no extra cards were added to this at all. And uh, we're using the onboard NVMe drive to uh, boot. And uh, we got the smallest one within reason because we don't really save much to the boot drive. We load uh, Debian on here. That's my preferred way to build the uh, servers. We seem to have the least amount of problems with them. We've tried running Windows before because this is something that comes up a lot is people want to build the NVR and then watch the NVR. The problem is watching the NVR is actually a little bit more taxing because it, you watch it via a web browser. So that web browser has to be constantly running at the same time it's recording. We've built systems like this and that is where you have to think about if you want it to do that, if you want the NVR to both record and then read back all those files and be playing them on a screen, then you have to can take that into consideration for build because this is going in a rack and they're going to use another computer to view them no problems at all and so we don't have to worry about what os is on here uh, and we find the least amount of trouble being like i said a debian one uh, but if you go with a windows box then you have the issues that come inherent with windows making sure you don't have any updates turned on or scheduled uh, because you obviously lose recordings when you do that versus you know running it like this so that's why this is my preferred way and when we sell the jobs we, we sell them as get a separate computer just for viewing that way if something happens the viewing computer gets updated you just reboot it no big deal now we use the mdma mdam uh, raid setup and then i loaded a cockpit to make it easy to administer for not just me but for people who don't know the command line very well maybe some of my staff um that is, and i'll show you how that works here in a second that allows us to uh, easily, if there's ever a problem with the drive, you can use a web interface on there. I've talked about Webmin and I've talked about Cockpit in the past. Cockpit's just a nice, easy way to do it. Uh, we also load net data on here so we can get statistics on the machine if we ever need to dig into any type of problems that are going on. And I'm going to show you that in a second here when we get to the software part of this. Now, the other nice thing is, without having a special specialization here, uh, it's a pretty straightforward load. You just load Debian, load Java, um, add that library on there, which is probably the trickiest part, which isn't all that tricky. There's plenty of instructions on how to do that. Um, then you load the Unify NVR software. So this keeps it very clean. There's nothing else loaded on here, so there's nothing else to really have to worry about. The other thing is, I know someone's probably saying, well, what about a free NAS? What about ZFS? The problems I've had with those is the only way to get the Unify software to work, and maybe this will change in the future, uh, but is to run it inside of a free NAS jail. I considered it, uh, but I played around with it, and I just didn't find it to be the most reliable system. When there's updates, it just seems a little, uh, I'm going to put the word hacky to put together, not as clean. Uh, this is a really nice, clean boots every time, boots immediately. As a matter of fact, the, uh, the splash screen that comes up for the motherboard is the longest part of the boot process. It only boots in about four or five seconds at most, and that's it, it's running. It right away starts to unify NVR, everything uh, starts recording, so rebooting this is not even a big deal at all, uh, other than the fact that it pauses on the screen. That's like the longest part of the process. And then the uh, two second countdown timer while the grub menu loads in Debian, uh, while it counts down in case you wanna boot into something else. So it's nice, solid, great performance. Um, it survived all of our power cycling tests. You know, of course, we went into BIOS. You set it to auto power on in case of power loss, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but it's worked really well. Now, one of the things that you have to consider, and this is the big issue, and uh, this has no problem performing with this, and we had a client that caused a little bit of a problem uh, with something we didn't expect. We spec'd out a machine able to handle the number of cameras they had. And uh, this particular machine needs a long record time and they're going to have about 35 cameras on it when it's fully deployed. We have nine of them here. The other ones are already installed or being in a process of being installed on site at the client. Um, we're waiting for the rest of the facility to be built to uh, get the rest of these in. But the concern we had and a problem the client created, the unexpected, was they decided that they wanted to have like five people coming through the videos all the time. And it wasn't the inbound that the uh, system was choking out. It turned out to be the outbound. This is actually where I like having tools like NetData and Debian because it's really easy to start seeing the problem because the client doesn't tell you that they gave the same login to all these different people in management and they all just like playing with the camera videos and then reading back all those camera videos was taxing the system more than writing <laughs> to the system and it was slowing down. So them complaining about it being slow turned out was easy to source when we seen the outbound traffic was so dramatic on the machine and you find out. So 
this is where the RAID array and the 7200 RPM drives really make a big difference. Um, we've installed before some of the Western Digital Purple uh, drives for single, like four camera uh, small offices and things like that, and they work great in a single drive system, and you're not actively having someone constantly combing through it, and it's reasonably fast to look up videos. But when you talk about 30 cameras recording and then a bunch of recordings and then having a bunch of people come back and read, that's where you want to get a faster and faster rate array. Uh, there comes a point, and maybe at one point we'll build one big enough, uh, where because we have a proposal out for a client that's going to be all done with enterprise hardware, and it's going to have um, a massive storage array because they want full-time, non-stop video recording. And that might be a case where you have the Unify NVR and then a separate uh, storage controller altogether uh, because they're talking around 200 terabytes of storage. So that would be something unique. I'm hoping it gets approved and I'm hoping it's something we'll actually be able to film. And it, uh, but some of these unfortunately end up delivered directly on site and they're in secure facilities, which is why they need this. So you can't bring cameras in there. But I'll at least talk about it if it happens because it's a pretty cool build idea we have and hopefully it works. But uh, that's pretty much it. I'll show you the software real quick and show you what it looks like running. But it's it's really impressive how well this works. Uh, the other thing that I really like is at idle, without the cameras recording, I think it goes down to about 72 watts, sometimes maybe um, 68. I've seen it kind of fluctuate, bouncing back and forth, depending on when you're looking at the cameras and stuff or you know doing a video feed out of it. But the peak with all cameras recording is only about 90 watts or so watch, which is impressive when you think that we have six, eight terabyte, 7,200 RPM drives and everything else, and all the cameras, well, nine of them that we have so far, uh, turned on for full-time record, we are able to, like I said, it sits about 90, 92 watts. So uh, low wattage is nice, not just because of the power bill, but also because of the heat. This is a really cool build, like nothing's warm at all. Uh, even running, even writing to the hard drives, it's not stressing them everything stays nice and cool now these uh kingwin ssd uh it's going kingwin drive bays too they have fans on them so they keep the airflow well uh and airflow all flows very very nicely through here without there's not like a blow dryer effect as uh, i felt with some servers you put your hand on the back and you're like oh yeah you can just feel the heat pumping out of here um that goes back to one of the nice things about the ryzen just they're generally in a fairly efficient processor uh wattage wise so they don't they don't generate a ton of heat so that's really a uh, Definitely a, a bonus here. So let's take a look at the software and that'll, that'll wrap this up. So here's a look at the Debian 9 system uh, running for this MVR. Here's a look at the system and you can see right now I have all nine cameras connected. They're all set to record and it's barely peeking out the CPU. Some of these spikes you see were me logging in and opening up and playing with the machine, but when we're not actively doing anything like right now, you can see it pretty much sits here at idle. Now the storage, here's all those drives set up and we'll get into the details here. This is all done on Extent 4. It's a RAID 6, 6 disk uh, system. And we have 29 uh, TIB usable storage here out of the total. So we've got it set up as a RAID 6, so we have a little bit of redundancy in here. That was enough to meet with the storage requirements and the redundancy requirements for this particular project. And like I said, this is all pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, the NVR, the Net Data dashboard that we installed, I've talked about Net Data before. You can find it in my other videos. This is a great tool to try to dig into all the different things and the processes. And we'll actually show you uh, what's going on here. So let's look at the system overview, and then we're going to go ahead and play with the cameras at the same time. So here's the cameras, here's the dashboard. So watch the CPU usage, which you can see here and you can see the load on the machine. So we'll go ahead and uh, open up the live view. And the act of opening up made the camera jump, made the camera system use a little bit. Uh, so still not much disk read or write going on. It's overall pretty, pretty mundane in terms of uh, usage. If we go through the recordings, like I said, the system's nice and fast, even with just these nine cameras, no problem. Any recording I want to jump to for whatever day is pretty much immediate. So let's actually filter it backwards. I think we got something on a 24th. Yeah, it's when we first turned it on. Yeah, nothing on that particular day. 25th, okay, here's at night. So you can see it pretty much instantly jumps to any point. Here's where we turn on the lights in the studio when we came in. The cameras are just laying on the table right now. We just turn them on full-time record to uh, do some testing with them and play around with the motion record. So it's actually filtering for the motion events. So you can actually filter it out and say, only show me the full-time recording versus the motion events, so on and so forth. 
but you can see it's really hardly doing anything to the system. And if we look over here, and we'll go to the uh, dashboard, memory, out of the 32 gigs of RAM we have installed of this, we're peaked out at eight gigs right now. Now this will scale up a bit once we start putting some things in, but a lot of this is actually going towards the process of viewing, not the recording of it. So as the people log in and start viewing this and there's a lot of streams going out, it has to create some sessions. Uh, same with the network IO. Overall, you can see the network IO is pretty low here, but when we do things like we're gonna grab a group of videos and hit download all, whoops, I grabbed way too many, I hit all the videos. I have noticed that if you try to grab like a few hundred videos out of Unify, uh, it'll just give a page error. I think it's probably that the page can't render that many at once. And it's probably not the best thing to try to download hundreds of videos at a time out of the Unify system. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. So let's go ahead and just grab a smaller number of videos. Okay, select a couple different videos here, download all. And you see a little blip of 320, but overall, when you're looking at the memory, hardly any more memory usage, disk I.O., just a little peak here. It's certainly nothing that will overtax these drives. Um, like I said, the system remains really fast, and that's obviously a really big deal if you have a lot of people viewing in that, making sure that the system remains fast. And then the CPU throughout this entirety of this, barely anything on the CPU. There's those couple blips where I probably grabbed too many uh, files at once and caused the CPU to blip. But that's about it, mostly sitting here. And these are nine cameras full-time recording. When we're not viewing stuff, uh, well, we're viewing, but not actually actively going through the archives, the processor's barely getting over even, you know, 10% sitting here. So like I said, the Ryzen is plenty powerful enough to uh, do this. And it's just the basic Ryzen 3. Uh, so it doesn't take a ton of CPU, but you have to make sure you don't have a bottleneck in your I.O. And like I said, that's where you can dig into some of this and kind of take a look at it. With, thing, with tools like NetData and uh, see what's going on and look at the number of processes running and things like that. So hopefully this was helpful. Uh, and like I said, when you're building these, I'm hoping to keep building bigger and bigger ones. I've seen people in the forums who've built some that are really large. I'd like to get to that point <laughs> um, and maybe have a, have a sale right there. But uh, for doing this, it's gonna be, I think in total 36 cameras on this machine this seems to be more than fast enough. Like I said, even at nine here, we're barely even taxing the system at all. Um, and we've have all the 30 camera systems with similar builds that have been working great, but I do recommend these faster hard drives, especially if you have a lot of people doing uh, reads and writes and pulling a lot of data. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave us some feedback below to let us know any details, what you like and didn't like as well, because we love hearing the feedback or if you just want to say thanks, leave a comment. If you want to be notified of new videos as they come out, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell icon. That lets YouTube know that you're interested in notifications. Hopefully they send them, <laughs> as we've learned with YouTube. Anyways, if you want to contract us for consulting services, you go ahead and hit lawrencesystems.com and you can reach out to us for all the projects that we can do and help you. We work with a lot of uh, small businesses, IT companies, even some large companies, and you can farm different work out to us or just hire us as a consultant to help design your network. Also, if you want to help the channel in other ways, we have a Patreon. We have affiliate links. You'll find them in the description. You'll also find recommendations to other affiliate links and things you can sign up for on lawrencesystems.com. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.